It's better to get your face to go. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد النبي وآله وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم لك الحمد ولا ما جرى بك ضاؤك في أوليائك الذين استخلصتم لنفسك ودينك إذ اكترت لهم جزيلا ما عندك من النعيم المكيم الذي لا زوال له ولا محلال بعد عن شرط عليهم الزهد في درجات هذه الدنيا الدنيا وزكر فيها وزبر جها فشرت لك ذلك وعلمت منهم الوفاء بي فقبلتهم وقربتهم وقدمت لهم الذكر العلي والثناء الجلي وهبت علي ملائكتك وكرمتهم بوحيك ورفتهم بعلمك وجعلتهم الضرية إليك والوسيلة إلى رضوانك فبعض أسكن توجلتك إلى أن أخرجته منها وبعض حملته في فلكك ونجيته ومنا منا ما من الحلكة برحمتك وبعض اتخذت لنفسك خليلا وسع لك لسان صدق في الآخرين وعجبت وجلت ذلك عليا وبعض كلمت من شجرة تكليما وجلت له من أخيه رضا ووزيرا وبعض أولدت من غير أبي وأعطيت البينات وأيدت بروح القدوس وكل شرات له الشرية ونحجت له من حاجة وتخيرت له أوسياء مستحفظا بعد مستحفظ من مدة إلى مدة إقامة لدينك ووجة على عبادك وليلا يزول الحق ومكره ويغلب الباطل ولا أهله ولا يقول أحد لولا أرسلت إلينا رسولا منذرا وكمت لنا علما حاديا 
ஜபராயில் வல்முசவிமீனிக்கும் <laughs> ஃபீயத்தும்பைனாத்மகாமுஹிமோமந்தோக்கானாமினோஹம்மதிமுஹம்மத் ஜிரன்ஃபுமலையின்ஜரின்ல்மஃத்தஃபில்குர்பாக்குமாலையின்ஜரின்ல்மன்ஷாயத்தஃதைலாரபீஸ்பீல மௌல <laughs> அல்லாஹும்மன் <laughs> ஃபீனிமீன்ஸ்ஜிதீமாஹ ஃபமனராதல்மதீனத்வல்ஹிக்மத்வல்ஃபியாத்தியாம்பாபிஹ்மீ வதமி வந்தீதைனீவத்துஞ்சோதாத்தீஷியத்துக்கலமனாபிரமின்னோர்முவ்யத்தோஜோமுஹலீஃபில்ஜன்னோமினூனபாதிவக்கானபாதோதம்மின
يحذو حذو الرسول صلى الله عليه وآله ما ويكاتل ولا التعويل ولا تأخذوا في الله لوما تلائم قد وترى في سناديد العرب وكتل أبطالهم ونا وشذو أبانهم فعودا كلوبهم أخادا بدرية وخيبرية وهنينية وغيرهم فضبت على دعوتي وكبت على منابذتي حتى كتل الناكثين والكاسطين والماركين ولما كذا لحبا وكتل وأشكل آخرين يتبع وأشكل أولين لم يمتثل أمر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله في الحادين بعد الحادين والأمة مسرة لا مكتي متمية لا قطية رحم وإكسائي ولدي إلا الكليل ممن وفى لرعاية الحق فيهم فكتل من كتل وسبي من سبي وأكسي من أكسي وجر القضاء لهم بما يرجى له سن المثوبة إذ كانت الأرض لله يورثها من يشاء من إباد ولا أكبة للمتكين وسبحان ربنا إن كان وعد ربنا لمفول ولن يخلف الله وعد وهو العزيز الحكيم قال لا تعيب من أهل بيت محمد وعلي صلى الله عليهما وآلهما فليبكي الباكون وياهم فليندب النادبون ولمثلهم فلتضرف في الدموع وليسرخ الصارخون ويزج الضاجون ويجل الجون أين الأسن وأين الأسن أين أبناء الأسن صالح بعد الصالح وصادق بعد الصادق أين السبيل بعد السبيل أين الخيرة بعد الخيرة أين الشموس الطالية أين الأكمار المنيرة أين الأنجم الزائرة أين آلام الدين وكوائد العلم أين بكية الله التي لا تخلو من الإترة الحادية أين المعد لكتداء الظلم أين المنتدر لكامة العمت والإواج أين المرتجى لزالة الجور والودوان أين المدخر لتديد الفرائض والسنان أين المتخير ليادة الملة والشريعة أين معمل لحياء الكتاب وهدودي أين محي معالم الدين وأحلي أين كاسم الشوكة المعتدين أين هادم أبنية الشرك والنفاق أين مبيد أهل الفسوك والإسيان والتغيان أين عاسد فروع الغي والشكاك أين تامث أثار الزيج والأحواء أين كاتي وعبائل الكذب والإفتراء أين مبيد الوتات والمرد أين مستاسل على الإناد والتضليل والإلحاد أين مهز الأولياء ومضل العداء أين جامع الكلمة على التقوى أين باب الله الذي منه يؤتى أين وجه الله الذي لن يتوجه الأولياء أين السبب المتصل بين العرض والسماء أين صاحب يوم الفتح وناشر راية الهدى أين مؤلف شمل الصلاح والرضا أين الطالب دخول الأنبياء وابناء الأنبياء أين الطالب دم المكتول بكربلاء أين المنسور ولا من اتدى عليه وافترى أين المستر الذي يجاب إذا دا أين صدر الخلائق ذو البر والتقوى 
وَإِنَ ابْنُ النَّبِيِّ الْمُصْطَفَى وَابْنُ عَلِيٍّ الْمُرْتَضَى وَابْنُ خَدِيجَةَ الْغَرَّى وَابْنُ فَاطِمَةَ الْكُبْرَى بِأَبِي أَلْتَ وَأُمِّي وَنَفْسِي لَكَ الْوِقَاءُ وَالْحِمَاءُ يَا ابْنَ السَّادَةِ الْمُكَرَّبِينَ يا ابن النجباء الأكرمين يا ابن الهداة المحديين يا ابن الخيرة المحذبين يا ابن الغتارفة الأنجبين يا ابن الأطائب المتحرين يا ابن الخذارمة المنتجبين يا ابن الكماكمة الأكرمين يا ابن البدور المنيرة يا ابن السرج المضية يا ابن الشوب الثاكبة يا ابن العنجم الزائرة يا ابن السمل الواضية يا ابن العلام اللائها يا ابن الولوم الكاملة يا ابن السنل المشهورة يا ابن المعلم المعثورة يا ابن الموجزات الموجودة يا ابن الدلائل المشهودة يا ابن السرات المستقيم يا ابن النبي العظيم يا ابن من وافيهم من الكتاب لدى الله علي عكيم يا ابن الآيات والبينات يا ابن الدلائل الظاهرات يا ابن البراين الواضيات الباهرات يا ابن الوجج البالغات يا ابن النعم السابغات يا ابن طه والمحكمات يا ابن ياسين والضاريات يا ابن التور والعاديات يا ابن من دنا فتدلى فكان كعب كوسين أو أدنى دنوا واقترابا من العلي الأعلى ليت شعري عين استكرت بك النوى بل يعرض تكلك أثرا برضوى غير أنذي توى عزيز علي أن أرى الخلق ولا ترى ولا أسمع لك عسيسا ولا نجوى عزيز علي أن تهيت بك دوني البلوى ولا ينالك مني ثجيج ولا شكوى بنفسي أنت من مغيب لم يخلو منا بنفسي أنت من عظيم ما نزعنا بنفسي التمنية الشائك يتمنى من مؤمن ومؤمنة ذكر فحنى بنفسي أنت من عكيد زن لا يسامى بنفسي أنت من أثيل مد لا يجارى بنفسي أنت من تلاد نعم لا تضاها بنفسي أنت من نصيف شرف لا يساوى إلى متى حار فيك يا مولاي وإلى متى وأي خطاب عسف فيك وأي نجوى عزيز علي أن أجاب دونك وأناغى عزيز علي أن أبكيك ويكسو لك الورى عزيز أن يجري عليك دونه ما جراء هل من معين فوتي لما أولويل والبكاء هل من جزوين فوسا إذا جزو إذا خلا هل قضية إن الفساد تعين على القضاء هل إليك يا ابن أحمد سبيل فتلقى هل يتصل يومنا من كبيدة فنحظى متى نرد مناهل كرابية فنروى متى ننتكي من أضب مائك فقد طال الصدى متى نغاديك ونرابك فنكر عينا متى ترانا ونراك وقد نشرت لوا النصر ترع أترانا نعوف بك وأنت تهم الملا وقد ملات العرض أدنى وذكت عداك حوانا ويقابا وبرت الوتات وجادت الحق وكتات دابر المتكبرين واتسست وصول الظالمين ونحن نقول الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم أنت كشاف الكرب والبلوى وإليك استعدي فإنك العدوى وأنت رب الآخرة والدنيا 
فاغيثيان غياث المستغيثين وبيدك المبتلى واري سيدا ويا شديد القوى وازل نوبي الأسى والجواء وبرد قليلا ويا من على العرش استوى ومن إليه الرجاء والمنتهى اللهم ولا نعبدك التايكون إلى وليك المذكر بك وبنبيك خلقت لنا اسمة وملاذا وكمت لنا كواما ومعاذا وجلت للمؤمنين منا إماما فملغ منا طية والسلام وزدنا بذلك يا ربي إكراما وجل مستقر لنا مستقر ومقام واتمم نعمتك بتقديمك إياه وما منع حتى توردنا جنانك مرافقة الشهداء من خلاص عائد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وصل على محمد جدي ورسولك السيد الأكبر وعلى أبي السيد الأصغر وجدة الصديقة الكبرى فاطمة بنت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله ولا من استفيت من آبائه البرر ولي أفضل وأكمل وأتم وأدوم وأكثر وأوفر ما صليت على أحد من أسفيائك وخيرتك من خلقك وصلي علي صلاة لا غاية لأددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لعمدها اللهم واكم بالحق وادس بالباطل وادل بأولياك وادل بأعداءك وصلي اللهم بيننا وبين وصلة تؤدي إلى مرافقة سلفه وجل ممن يأخذ بعزة ويمكث في ظلهم وإن على تعدية وكوك إليه والاتعاد في طاعتي والتنا بمعصيتي وامن علينا برضاه وعبلنا رافته ورحمته ودواه وخيرا ما ننال بيسعة من رحمتك وفوزا عندك وجل صلاتنا به مقبولا وذنوبنا به مغفورا ودعانا به مستجابا وجل أرزاكنا به مبسوطا وهمومنا به مغفيا وهواي جنابي مغضية وأقبل إلينا بوجهك الكريم وأقبل تكربنا إليك وانزر إلينا نظرة رحيمة نستكمل بها الكرامة عندك ثم لا تسرف عنا بجودك واسكنا من عوض جدي صلى الله عليه وآله بكاسه وبيده Rayyan, rawiyan, haniyan, saigan la zama ba'dahu Ya arhamar rahimin Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa alihi بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم ارزقنا توفيق الطاعة وبود المعصية وصدق النية وإرفان الورمة وأكرمنا بالهدى والاستقامة والسديد السنتنا بالصواب والحكمة وأملا كلوبنا بالعلم والمعرفة والطحر بطوننا من الحرام والشبهة وَاقْفُ فَيْدِيَنَا عَنِ الظُّلْمِ وَالسَّرِكَ وَاقْضُ دَبْسَارَنَا عَنِ الْفُجُورِ وَالْخِيَعَانَ وَاسْدُ دَسْمَانَا عَنِ اللَّغْوِ وَالْغِيبَانَ وَتَفَضَّلَ لَا أُلَمَائِنَا بِالزُّحْدِ وَالنَّصِيحَةِ وَعَلَى الْمُتَلِّمِينَ بِالْجُهْدِ وَالرَّقْبَةِ وَعَلَى الْمُسْتَمِينَ بِالْإِتِّبَاعِ والموئذة ولا مرضى المسلمين بالشفاء والراء ولا موتى بالرافة والرحمة 
ولا مشايخنا بالوكار والسكينة ولا الشباب بالإنابة والتوبة ولا النساء بالحياء والإفاء ولا الأغنياء بالتواضع والساء ولا الفقراء بالصبر والقناة ولا الغزاة بالنصر والغلبة ولا الوسراء بالخلاص والرحم وعلى الأمراء بالعدل والشفق وعلى الرئية بالإنصاف وحسن السيرة وبارك للوجاج والزوار في الزاد والنفق وأقضي ما أجبت عليه من الحج والأمراء بفضلك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد والي الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد رحم الله من كرع سورة مباركة الفاتحة Inshallah, we'll be reciting the ziyara for Yom Al Jama. We'll be reciting the ziyara for Yom Al Jama, Inshallah. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Allahumma salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. السلام عليك يا حجة الله في أرضه السلام عليك يا عين الله في خلقه السلام عليك يا نور الله الذي يهتدي به المحتدون ويفرج به عن المؤمنين السلام عليك أيها المحدب الخائف السلام عليك أيها الولي الناصح السلام عليك يا سفين النجاة السلام عليك يا عين الحياة السلام عليك صلى الله عليك وآل بيتك الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليك عجل الله لك ما وعدك من النصر وظهور الأمر السلام عليك يا مولاي أنا مولاك عارف بأولاك وأخراك أتقرب إلى الله تعالى بك وبآل بيتك وانتظر ظهورك وظهور الحق على على يديك وأسأل الله وأسأل الله أن يصل على محمد وآل محمد وأن يجعلني من المنتظرين لك والتابعين والناصرين لك على عدائك والمستشهدين بين يديك في جملة أوليائك يا مولاي يا صاحب الزمان صلوات الله عليك وعلى آل بيتك هذا يوم الجمعة وهو يومك المتوقف 
وقعوا فيه ذهورك والفرج فيه للمؤمنين على يديك وقتل الكافرين بصيفك وأنا يا مولاي فيه ضيفك وجارك وأنت يا مولاي كريم من أولاد الكرام ومأمور بالضيافة والإجارة فاضفني وأجرني صلوات الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك الطاهرين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين محمد وآل محمد صلوات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن أمير المؤمنين وإمام المتقين عليا ولي الله أشهد أن أمير المؤمنين وإمام المتقين عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا لا إله إلا الله إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فوض أمري لله إن الله بصير بالعباد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل ونعم المولى ونعم النصير والصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله أنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على وقل رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم زينوا مجالسكم بالصلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman here in Florida or across the globe, wherever you may be hearing my voice, Salamun alaykum jamian wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <clears throat> Question, how many ways do you see a thing? When it comes to the Quran and the teachings of Islam, you'll find that they embody a philosophy, a way to look at things, a way to perceive things, a way to understand things. The same way that other major religions of the world have given a worldview and a philosophy, such as Christianity, such as Judaism. In order to understand the essence of Islam, you need to understand Islam, but you need to understand Islam as Islam teaches Islam, and not as we want it to be, and not how we perceive it to be. And if you want to understand it that way, you have to go to its essence. And you have to understand that, for example, well, who are the first Muslims? Who are the first persons to use the term Islam? And is it something that begins with the Prophet of, our, of Islam, Rasulullah? Or is it something that has some deeper insight? That is when I investigate the Quran and I find that, for example, Ibrahim is the first one who's called a Muslim. It's not Rasulullah, for example. That the religion of Allah, Allah says in the Quran, Inna deena indallahi al-Islam. That verily the deen or the way of life near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam. And so that means that from the time of Adam to Khatam, there's been one religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in order to understand the essence, you need to understand that chain of connectivity. So today, in the brief moments that I have with you, I want to look at a few things. Number one is how important is it to look at things again and perhaps again to try to get to its truth and to a un deeper understanding. Number two, how does education play a role in this? How important is education in understanding the reality of things as they are? And the fourth element is what does this have to do with our, uh, the third element being, what does this have to do with our iman, our belief system, our way of looking at the world so that we improve ourselves and become the best version of ourselves so that this Jum'ah, every Jum'ah and every day of life is a new manifestation of our existence on earth. And that is, how do we come to this world and make sure we leave this world a better place than we found it by making our contribution in whatever way that we can. This is our agenda for the next few moments that we are together. Wherever you are, here in Florida, or across the globe, from the bottom of your heart, send a salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. At the first level, for those who uh, mainly, uh, we have a lot of guests today who are here and who are watching and who will be coming, inshallah. So welcome to all of those. Uh, and it's important for us to welcome people. It's a big part of Islamic akhlaq to be welcoming, to have a warm welcome to people. And that akhlaq is a part of Islamic spirituality. That is to say that there are not two lives in Islam. Islam, you have to have one life. Yes, in our modern world, we have created two lives at least, if not more that I have my Husseiniya Imam Barga Masjid life, and then I have my other life. In the modern world, religion has been compartmentalized. Meaning, for example, 
Religion, if I'm Christian, is on Sundays. Or if I'm Jewish, it's on Saturdays. Or if I'm Muslim, it's on Fridays for an hour, maybe an hour and a five minutes. And so the idea is this was not Islam's vision, nor perhaps Christianity or Judaism's. The idea was we are supposed to be people who are principled, ethical, moral, good people through and through. But that should not come at a compromise of our success in life and society. We have created this false dilemma and this dichotomy that we think that this is the case. So now coming to this understanding and coming to the Quran and the world view, how important it is to understand how this can lead to success in this world and in the Akhara. You know, everywhere I'm going from here to New York and everywhere in between, we have the same common issues. The issues all rhyme. And the issues are, for example, you know, what's the future going to look like? Is there going to be anybody here? Is there going to be anybody taking care of the mosques, the Husseiniyas, the Imam Bargas? The same is true, by the way, in the Christian community, Jewish community, and many other communities. But I'm talking to you about our community because that's where we're together in the boat, in the ship together. So we can influence that. And so one of the things is we have perhaps not shared with others how powerful Islam is to get tremendous quality of life improvements in this dunya and in the akhara. If you look around our world, there's challenges that we're facing. For example, political challenges, economic challenges, many other challenges. And when it comes to Islam, Islam said, well, your job is to try to become the best version of yourself as an individual, help your family and friends around you, and uplift the society so that the world is more equitable, more fair and reasonable. And so it mitigates these extremes. So we don't have a world of extremes. So now comes the question, well, the Quran says, uh, there is no dry nor wet except that it's in this book. Now people ask, for example, that the Quran itself is saying, well, everything is in this book. I don't need any other book. Well, yes and no. We need to investigate this again. And we need to look at this again. They say a scholar was asked, a man came, and he said, you say everything is in this book, in the Quran? He said, yeah. Okay. He said, well, can you tell me, based on this book then, what is the price of a dozen, a dozen loaves of bread in the market? Okay. He said, yeah, sure, no problem. He said, call the baker. A baker? He said, yeah. He said, I want, the baker came. He said, I want to buy some bread. He said, how much? A dozen. He said, okay, I'll get you a dozen. He said, how much? Five bucks, five dollars. In fact, I'll throw in an extra, baker's dozen, 13 for you. He said, paid him, got the bit, loaves of bread. The guy went on his way, the baker went his way, and he said, look. And so the man who asked the question said, I said, get it from the Quran, what did you do? He said, the scholar said, look, I got you your answer, the Quran gave it to me. He said, what do you mean? You just asked the baker to give it. He said, yes, but I was acting on a Quranic injunction. He said, what is the Quranic injunction? Fasalu ahl zikri in kuntum la ta'lamun. Ask those who know if you do not know. So the concept of Islam was not that you take your brain and you throw it away. The concept was Allah saying, I'm giving you the tools. I'm giving you parameters as well. Use those parameters, use those tools to come forward. Number one. Number two, how important is knowledge? And if you keep this in mind, this will really come to point in the second khutbah when I talk about what's going on in our world. Why is education so important? Why is intellect so important? Why is understanding so important? You know, if I don't focus on education, if I don't focus on this, what ends up happening is I can get fooled and I can even fool you. What was that old saying of Mark Twain, which I think has a lot of wisdom? Mark Twain, the American writer, he said something interesting. He said, it is easier to fool a man than it is to convince him that he has been fooled. It is easier to fool a man than to convince him that he has been fooled. And you'll find that since of 150 years ago when he said this, till this day, this principle is coming true. That is, if you don't understand the parameters that run society and you don't run, understand that, what ends up happening is you lose out at a, at a level, at a systemic level and a society level. Example, if you look at the Quran from the beginning to end, there's a common theme. Tawheed is a common theme. A common theme is do good to people, have love and compassion bef between people, have a sense of camaraderie that brings people together. And you'll find another principle in the Quran. What is the principle? That is fighting group think. In psychology, there's a phenomenon called group think. Group think is when all of the people get on one page, on one concept or one idea, 
But what if they're wrong? What if they're all wrong? Somebody rises and says, look, we have to reinvestigate this. We have to relook at this. We have to re understand this once again. We have to look at it with new eyes. I remind you, if you read, there's something known as this phenomenon that will help you. Survivorship bias. I'll give you an example. World War II, when the British Air Force, the Royal Air Force, they had mathematicians who were analyzing and trying to make improvements mathematically and statistically and otherwise in terms of their processes and procedures. So, what happened? They were investigating and looking at airplanes that were coming back from the field and they wanted to reinforce them with extra plate and extra armor. And they said, look, we need to put extra plate and extra armor on these planes so that they are less susceptible and less likely to crash. But the problem is with lift dynamics and landing and taking off, you can't have plate and armor, extra plate and armor over the whole plane. Otherwise, you'll have a big problem coming up and down and it'll cause aerodynamic problems. So they said, we can only put it in the most vulnerable locations to reinforce and protect these airplanes. So when, this, when they got the data, they analyzed the planes to see where are most of the bullet holes. Stay with me here, it's an important principle. Where are most of the bullet holes? And when they looked at the planes, they found that most of the bullet holes were all on the wings. And so all the statisticians said, look, we need to reinforce the wings of the airplane. And one statistician and mathematician got up and he said, you're all wrong with due respect. So what do you mean? Like, you know, imagine you're speaking to a room of your colleagues. He says, uh, you're wrong. I said, why? He said, because you are only analyzing those airplanes that we got back from the field. You're not considering those that we never got back. So what do you mean? He said, you need to go to the field and look, check out those planes that never came back. Where did they get hit? And so when they went to the field and they analyzed those planes that got hit and never came back, they were all not shot in the wings. They were all shot in the cockpit where the pilot is. The dynamics were different. So they said, you need to reinforce actually the cockpit. This is called survivorship bias. You know, sometimes you, know, you tell somebody, you know, eat healthier, don't smoke, don't eat too uh, healthy, unhealthy foods. And they said, that person lived, they smoked, they lived to 90. They're only telling you about the person who lived, they're not telling you about the 50 other people of their friends who died at 60, 65. It's a bias sample. So the principle being, it's very difficult though as an individual to stand up and tell people with due respect, you guys need to look at this again. There's another phenomenon in psychology called the bystander effect. The bystander effect, if two people are in a tussle and two people are going at war with one another and two people are fighting on the side of the street and one person passes by and sees it and then another person comes and sees it and a third person and a fourth person, as the people watch the scene, as the size of the crowd that is observing and watching the scene increases, what happens to the probability that someone will do something? Does it increase or decrease? It decreases. Because everyone thinks somebody else will do something. I don't need to do something. Somebody else can have a do, will take care of it. I won't. This is exactly what was happening in Karbala. 72. Let's take 72 for example. There were maybe 110, 100, whatever the number was. But at that point in time, everyone else was saying, well, somebody else will take care of it. But there was a few who were saying that, look, no, principle is what matters. Islam hasn't said that it's about quantity, it's about quality. Yes, if you can bring quality and quantity together, that's beautiful. Rasulullah did that. Imam Ali did that. But others didn't. It didn't happen all the time. If it happens, nur on ala nur. But the principle must remain. You have certain parameters to abide by. As I remind you and I remind myself, there's always how many sides to a coin? Three. Asan. Heads, tails, and the edge. And often you may find the truth is on the edge. We don't consider that. In Islam, what are those things that you know that you know? What are the three categories of knowledge? What you know, you know. You know, and I know that for example, I know my name, I know my house, I know my address. Then there are things that I know I don't know. Those are the limits of my knowledge that I am aware of. I know that, for example, I don't know how to do bypass surgery. But Alhamdulillah, I can find out a doctor who can do that and perform that surgery. I don't know the 
maybe the advanced insights in oncology and cancer research, but I can go to a specialist who can help in that domain and that area. Those are the limits of my knowledge and I know them. But then there's another category of what you don't know that you don't know. And this is often what destroys us. In Islam, there are two types of jahl. Jahl al-murakkab and jahl al-basit. Jahl al-basit is simple ignorance. Simple, simple ignorance is the first kind. I know what I don't know. And that's not as bad. But what's really dangerous is jahl al-murakkab. Compound ignorance. I don't know what I don't know. Example, Umar ibn Sa'ad. You know, Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam speaks to him before the day of Ashura. And he says, Umar, you know, who, you know whose son you are? You're the son of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. If you ask the Muslim world, he's one of the Ashra Mubashira, one of the ten granted paradise by Rasulullah. His son ends up becoming Umar ibn Sa'ad. And then so Imam Hussein says, you don't know who I am? He said, yes, I know who you are. He said, then why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you want my head? He said, you haven't heard Rasulullah say, I am say the Shabab Ahl Jannah? You have not heard Rasulullah say, Al-Hasan wal Hussein, Imaman, Qama, Qada. You haven't heard all of this? You don't know this? He said, of course I know this. He said, then why? He said, well, because I've been promised the governorship of Ray. I've been promised to be the governor of a province called Ray, which is modern day Tehran and the expanses of it. And Imam Hussein said, look, if you want money, I'll give you money. I have a property, a land. You know, sometimes we think the Imams were impoverished. No, the Imams, they had wealth. But they used that wealth for developing and helping people and society. They just weren't using it without a purpose. In fact, if you remember, Imam Hussein alayhi salam bought the land of Karbala and he walked it away, for example. Imam Hassan alayhi salam gave his wealth twice in totality and half times, several times. So where was this income coming from? Imam Ali freed a thousand slaves. Where was it coming from? But remember, the principle of the Ahlul Bayt was as their income increased, they didn't increase their standard of living, they increased their standard of giving. That's the principle that they operated with. So Imam Hussein says, you want property, money? I'll give you, I'll give you a land and it will take care of you for the rest of your life. You don't need to work a day in your life. He basically offered to retire him. And still yet he said, no, I can't. Because that, that principle was there. That concept of I need this power and I need this position and this prestige. But what was Jahl al murakkab for Umar bin Sa'ad was, he was operating under the assumption that he'll kill Imam Hussein. Yes, that happened. But he was also operating under the assumption that Yazid will keep his word and he'll get the land of right. And the principle was, he killed Imam Hussein, lost the Akhirah, and he did not get a right. So sometimes you live operating under a false assumption, thinking that you'll get something, when in reality you won't. I remind you, and I remind myself as I'm drawing to a conclusion here, you know, one of the challenges we have in our world is there's no context. The challenge is we want espresso shots of information. And what happens is that, that's a positive and a negative. The positive is I can get a lot of quick information, but the challenge and the risk with that is I can also confuse the masses and I can also lie to people very easily. I can also cheat people very easily because I can give slogans, right? What's a very easy slogan to confuse people with? A land without a people for a people without a land. I can say it and you say, hey, this has a nice ring to it. Maybe it's true. After time, you forget about whether it's true or not. You say, hey, I remember that slogan. So the principle is you need context to understand things. Why is education important? Remember, even our founding of our nation, I remind you when I was in Los Angeles, I was checking into the hotel and they had all these quotations by the founding fathers of America. And one of the things that they said, which I think they may be turning in the graves today based on, is Jefferson said, the only way to preserve the integrity of our nation, of the United States, he's saying, is to make sure that we educate the populace. A proper education, a good education, a thoughtful education that makes their minds illuminated. These checks and balances that were put in were not for any other reason. The founding fathers, as I remind you, Jefferson had two copies of the Quran. One as a law student and one when his library burnt, he bought a second copy, Thomas Jefferson. Number two, is if you go to the Supreme Court of the United States, you find that etched into the stone are the greatest lawgivers in history. Amongst them is Moses and the Ten Commandments, Hammurabi and Hammurabi's Code, and still till this day, Prophet Muhammad. The principle being that you may find more Islamic principles in this country's foundation than in other Muslim countries. 
Have we moved away from that as a society? Maybe, yes. But the foundational layer is still there, and that means there's hope to come back to it, to revive this notion. And that's where education, enlightenment, and awareness comes in. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم العصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين فاطر السماوات والأرضين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam and Iman here in Florida or across the globe سلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته In the second khutbah, very succinctly, I invite you and I invite myself to the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for verily that is the greatest of riches. Sometimes we need to reinvestigate and re-understand terms. For example, when the Quran came forward, when Islamic philosophers studied Islam, they said that Islam, because it's, the Quran is speaking to the general populace, it has to use metaphors, stories, and simple ideas for people to understand. But for the philosophers and the particulars and the people who want a deeper understanding, they can use those to expand and get a deeper understanding. So sometimes we have to reinvestigate things. For example, we're told to observe taqwa. Imam Ali, for example, in his letters and his wasiyah says, Ittaqullah, grasp onto the taqwa of Allah. But sometimes we have to reinvestigate what taqwa means. Sometimes we, mean, we translate taqwa to mean just, just piety. But there's a deeper meaning. Taqwa, at one time, for example, we think ibadah, we think worship. And I remind you and I remind myself, when I was mentioning this overseas, we don't sometimes understand the, the treasure that we have within our own deen and our own religion. Sometimes we just need to know how to share it with other people. How would you explain the Islamic concept of jihad? You know, here, last week and many times, uh, and every week, we have members of the community for a broader audience. At this mosque and this Husseiniyah, I mean this masjid, you'll find people who are Christians coming, university students, intellectuals, and things of that nature. Why? Because they're trying to see, does Islam have a civilization? And oftentimes, remnants of civilizations are formed in the, are, are remained in the form of architecture, art, and other things. And so it's important to understand this because when you look at this, you start saying, hold on a second, what civilization gave rise to this art, this architecture, this infrastructure? It was thinking. The same way that many people today are saying, for example, in a place like India, that what is the Muslim community given? Well, it was the Muslim community that gave you the Taj Mahal, which you were making a lot of money off of in terms of, uh, for example, tourism. And so when people think about that and miss those points, many Muslims, by the way, don't know that that's a remnant of Islamic architecture. And that's a problem. Because you need to know what Islam gave as a civilization in terms of architecture, art. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for example, in the Quran, in Surah Hashar, Musawwir meaning the artist, the fashioner. Why is Allah talking about art? If Allah talked about art, there must be someone who, for example, gave art to this world as a representative of Allah on earth. And you'll find that amongst the contributions of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam, was not only winning on the battlefield, was not only, for example, winning in every uh, intellectual endeavor of life, it was also giving the Kufic script of calligraphy to the world. The Kufic Khat Kufi, the Kufic script was given to the world by Imam Ali alayhi salam. So we have to broaden our horizons. You know, some of you may be wondering, we have a lot of guests here today, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, where's my weapon? Well, this is my weapon of choice. And sometimes you have to reinvestigate what is the weapon that is the popular thing and what's the right thing. What's popular is not always true. I gave you this example when we were talking about Jannatul Baqi. Our ulama say there are three theories as to where Bibi Fatima is buried. There's one is Jannatul Baqi, one is between the member and the house in the garden, Rawzatam al Riyadh al Jannah, next to the member of Rasulullah, and the third is in her own room. What scholars say is the most popular one is Jannatul Baqi, but it's not the most probable. The most probable, they say, is actually in her own room. But again, there's a khasa and a amma discussion here a general conversation for the general public, and there's a conversation amongst the particulars. We have to know these things to understand these dynamics. That's where education comes in, bringing all of these pieces of the puzzle together. The head of Buddhism, the Dalai Lama, Islam has given you tremendous, beautiful elements. The head of 
Tibetan Buddhism, the Dalai Lama is on a public forum sitting with Dr. Sayyid Hussain Nasser representing Islam and a priest and a rabbi, and they're talking about different faiths. And the Dalai Lama says, look, what I hear on the news about jihad, I'm told by my friends, that's not jihad, that's not a jihad. Because I'm told it's holy war. And anyone who has read the Quran knows that there's no holy war word in the Quran. It doesn't exist. Jihad means struggle from juhad, struggle. So he said, that's what I hear. And so Dr. Nasser mentions, and he says, look. And he says, yes, this is based on a tradition of the Prophet, where there was a group of people coming back from the battlefield. And everyone said, congratulations to those who are coming back from the struggle, from the jihad. And Rasulullah amended and adjusted the statement and said, congratulations to those who are coming back from the minor struggle to the major struggle. So what do you mean? What, what, what minor? That's minor? This, what's major? He said, the struggle with the self. So the Dalai Lama says, if that's the case, then all of Tibetan Buddhism can be summarized in the Islamic concept of jihad. What else do you need? But sometimes we have to relook at what we have. Similarly, Islam has said that taqwa is not only in the mihrab, although that's important. Taqwa may be bringing people together. Taqwa may be stepping on my ego and making myself a better person. Allah says, for example, in terms of Allah's dynamics, every single day is a new understanding and manifestation of Allah's rahmah and mercy on earth. Why did I say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen at the beginning? Kulla yawmin huwa fi shan. Every single day is a new manifestation of Allah's glory on earth. Similarly, do we every day have a new manifestation of ourselves representing Allah on earth? Or am I the same person that when I was 30, till this day I'm the same person? You know, they say it is attributed to Benjamin Franklin that most people die at 30, but they are buried at 80. As in, there's no new life. There's no new existence. It's the same thing on repeat. So we say that there's destiny, everything's decreed. This is not what Islam's view was. As Iqbal says, Tere darya mein kyun nahi hai? Why is there not a storm in your sea? He's saying about the destiny, you know, because there was a view in Islam that was put into Islam that wasn't there. That was that everything is totally decreed by Allah. We have no say in it. Until this day, people act like this. So Iqbal says, Tere darya mein Abbas, Abbas means useless, pointless. Abbas hai shikwae takdire yazda tu khud takdire yazda kyun nahi hai. He says that it's pointless to complain about the decree of Allah. Why aren't you the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's where he's saying khudi ko kar buland itna ke har takdir se pehle khuda bande se khud puche bata teri raza kya hai. That elevate yourself, that Allah says, you have raised yourself to such a level and such a maqam, that you tell me what you want, I'll make it happen. So we as followers of Ahlul Bayt, we should be on this journey of becoming successful, ethical members of society in politics, economics, and society, and bettering society through that. So I would not do justice if on the final thing that I'm mentioning here is the two things that are going on in our world. Be so good that they can't ignore you. You know, what's going on right now in the Middle East is devastating. And there's no doubt there's a big political theater going on with Iran being attacked and them saying all of these things. And we, as people of faith, pray for peace to prevail. We don't want any innocent life to be lost. Islam's fundamental element is that, to preserve life, to preserve. But sometimes you even have to investigate these elements of what it means and what's going on in our society, why education is so important to understand that dynamic. But another thing that I want to talk about is the injustice that's going on. Dr. Chomsky, Noam Chomsky has talked about this at MIT and other places, that there's something called manufactured consent. Manufactured consent is that we think that our views are our own. But there's an 80-20 Pareto principle in society that governs how we think and see things. That's either through the media, through academia, media, economics, and politics. So if you want to know what are the corridors of influence in society, see what is being struck at the hardest. And you'll notice that when this issue in the Middle East arose, the things that were being struck at the hardest were politics in one level, were economics, but another dynamic was academia. And you'll notice 
that the likes of Harvard, the likes of Columbia, the likes of Wharton, and these institutions were hit hard to the point that some of their leadership even was forced to resign. And Columbia's uh, president is also on the, uh, on the, in the crosshairs right now. I say this because something quite tragic has happened at the University of Southern California, USC. A valedictorian uh, by the name of Asma Tabassum, who was an engineer, and she got first place as a Muslim uh, and a, a member of that society in her university, she wasn't allowed to speak. And what was cited was that she was someone who had, in her personal life had expressed a concern for the Palestinian cause. And so they said, they cited, we are concerned about her safety. Well, this, this is what they said, and the safety of the general populace. So they doxed her. This is what's happening directly, but indirectly what's happening is, this is censoring and silencing a voice. And the reality of the matter is, that's why I tell people education is so vital. Wealth is important, don't get me wrong. But simultaneously to that, education is vital because what ends up happening is if you have wealth without education is you start getting, uh, you may get a sense of God complex. And that can also be very dangerous. Also, it limits how much influence we can have for the positive for society at large. And I'm telling you, where you are in America has an impact on your goals. You may be in certain parts of America or the world at large, and you may find that certain parts education, emphasize education more than others even certain parts of the world. By the way, I'm not saying education is all degrees. No, I'm saying education that enlightens, that illuminates from the Quran, the Ahlul Bayt, as well as broader understanding. That's how you solve problems. That's how you come to conclusions. And that's how you ultimately make the world a better place. And we pray that we are able to do that. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر. وصلى الله على رسول الكريم وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين. ولا علي المرتضى ولا فاطمة الزحراء ولا حسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكر بلا وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجافر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي وجدك على إبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة صلوا على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله أشهد أن عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله صلاة الجماعة إن الصلاة من سقيم وما حيا يا وما مات لله رب العالمين وجهت وجل فطر السماء وتحنيف مصر 
Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina As-Sarat Al-Mustaqeem Sarat Al-Ladhina An'amta Alayhim Ghayri Al-Maghzubi Alayhim Walad-Dalleen بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسبح لله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض الملك القدوس العزيز الحكيم هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يطلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحقوا بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم مثل الذين هم من التوراة ثم لم يحملوها كمثل الحمار يحمل أصفارا بأس مثل القوم الذين كذبوا بآيات الله والله لا يحدي القوم الظالمين قل يا أيها الذين هادوا إن زعمتم أنكم أولياء لله من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين ولا يتمنونه أبدا بما قدمت أيديهم والله عليم بالظالمين قل إن الموت الذي تفرون منه فإنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا نودي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله وذروا البيع ذلكم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون فإذا قضيت الصلاة فانتشروا في الأرض وابتغوا من فضل الله واذكروا الله كثيرا لعلكم تفلحون وإذا رأوا تجارة أو لحوة إن انفضلوا إليها وتركوك قائمة قل ما عند الله خير من اللهو ومن التجارة والله خير الرازقين الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمد سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العلى وبحمده الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العلى وبحمده الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد وأرقى وأسجد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده الله أكبر <تصفيق> اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي وكن عذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العلى وبحمده الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العلى وبحمد ربي صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر الحمد لله وخير الأسماء لله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد لا إله إلا الله إلها واحدا ونحن له مسلمون لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره المشركون لا إله إلا الله ربنا ورب أبائنا الأولين لا إله إلا الله وحده 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 أنجز وعدا ونصر عبدا وعز جندا وهزم الأحزاب وحده فله الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت ويميت ويحيي وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن علي ولي الله أشهد أن عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح حي على خير العمل حي على خير العمل قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الصلاة إن الصلاة ونسقيها استغفر الله ربي واتو الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر استغفر الله ربي وأتوب إليه الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي الأعلى وبحمده الله أكبر بحول الله وقوته أقوم وأقعد وأقعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا عذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الله أكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان ربي العظيم وبحمده سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر 
سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العلا و بحمد اللہ اکبر استغفر اللہ ربی و اتوب علیہ اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العلا و بحمد اللہ اکبر الحمدللہ و خیر الاسماء للہ شدو ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و شدو ان محمدا عبده و رسوله اللہم صلی على محمد و آل محمد بحول اللہ و قوته اقوم و اقعد و ارقا و اسجد اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العظیم و بحمده سمیع اللہ لمن حمیده اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العلا و بحمده اللہ اکبر استغفر اللہ ربی و اتوب علیہ اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العلا و بحمده اللہ اکبر بحول اللہ و قوته اقوم و اقعد و ارقا و اسجد اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العظیم و بحمده سمیع اللہ لمن حمیده اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العلا و بحمده اللہ اکبر استغفر اللہ ربی و اتوب علیہ اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان ربی العلا و بحمد ربی صلی على محمد و آل محمد اللہ اکبر الحمدللہ و خیر الاسماء للہ شدو ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و شدو ان محمدا عبده و رسوله اللہم صلی على محمد و آل محمد السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا وعلى إباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم عرفني نفسك فإنك إن لم تعرفني نفسك لم أعرف نبيك اللهم عرفني رسولك فإنك إن لم تعرفني رسولك لم أعرف حجتك اللهم عرفني حجتك فإنك إن لم تعرفني حجتك ضللت عن ديني
السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء السيدة نساء العالمين السلام عليك يا أبا محمد الحسن بن علي المجتبى السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليكم أمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي الباقر وجعفر بن محمد الصادق وموسى بن جعفر الكاظم وعلي بن موسى الرضا ومحمد التقي الجواد وعلي بن محمد النقي والحسن بن علي الزكي العسكري صلى الله عليك ابن الزهراء يا صاحب الزمان صلى الله عليك ابن الحسن يا صاحب الزمان سيدي الأمان 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 من فتنة الزمان السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا إمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان عجل الله لك ما وعدك من النصر وظهور الأمر ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا وصل يا رب على محمد وآله الطاهرين